Hi gang, Scott here. We're diving into the Augmented Sky AI tool in Luminar AI in this video. What the tool is, when you might reach for it, what its controls are, and a few quirks about using the tool so you can get the most out of it. I mean, this tool is about augmenting your skies, adding objects and overlays, to really to create composites. I wanna show you how this tool works. And really quick, if you are thinking about adding Luminar AI to your toolkit, check the show notes. There is an offer code down there that can save you some money. Let's have a look at Augmented Sky AI. The Augmented Sky AI tools down in our creative area, and let me open this up and expand all of our settings so we have everything at our disposal. The tool has two sections. We have our top part, which are the fundamentals, choosing the object we want to overlay into our sky, as well as some controls, and then we have some advanced control over the blend of the object with the sky. First and foremost, we have to choose a subject, an object to place in our sky. And there are a bunch of things that are built in to Luminar AI. You want to choose something that makes sense for your scene. In this example, for the purpose of going through the controls, I'm going to choose something that does not make sense. And uh, that way we can just see things more clearly. I'm going to scroll down here and choose plane number two. I suppose theoretically this could be happening, but you know, in, in likelihood I wouldn't have captured this photo. Uh, so um, the, the very first thing we do, uh, workflow-wise, we choose our object and come down to Place Object. Click the Place Object button. You get this wireframe on the scene, and you can rotate it. If I have my cursor on the outside there, you can see the double-headed arrow, so we can, we can rotate it. We can make this plane come in a little bit scarier. We can scale it. We can move it. Right? And let me position it here so... We're done, we click place object. So now we have this object placed and sized. Let me zoom in so we can see our other controls, okay? We have an amount slider. The amount is like how opaque or how transparent is the object we're adding. Like we wanted to make this, I don't know, for whatever reason, a ghost plane, right? Now if you're doing compositing work though, op opacity is important, right? You know, you want to have these controls here. If you're doing compositing work, you want to have this amount control. So that's what amount does. Warmth of the object, warmer or cooler. In this photo, I have a sunset going on. Probably makes sense for me to add a little bit of warmth. You can see like on the, uh, the, the bluish gray parts of the plane before, after. That's making a little more sense, right? So we're fine tuning the temperature to match our photo some. That's another important thing we want to do. We don't just want to pick an object, drop it in, and be done. We want to blend it in with our photo. We have relighting. So once again, this is this is similar to when you're doing a, a sky replacement. You know, relighting to you know add uh, the, the the type of light that you would expect to see here. But honestly, the defaults tend to be pretty good on relight. Little nudges here and there. You can see in this photo, if I push it up too much, it gets kind of washed out. And there really wouldn't be that much haze. If I were to look at this, you know, I'm <laughs> dropping this plane right in the middle of this ocean here. This is pretty close to the camera, so there wouldn't be that much haze going on. Now, in some cases, you need to reach into the advanced settings. And this would be when you're doing a composite and there is maybe some more intricate things in the sky where the edges of your mask need to be refined. That's what mask refinement does. Let me take this down to zero. And what you're looking for with mask refinement is you know, the edges of your mask, the edges around the object you're placing in the sky. Now, the objects that are included with Luminar AI, many of them are very, very clean. And as I'm pushing mask refinement higher and higher, I'm really just not seeing any difference around the edges. That part of that is due to the nature of this photo, right? There's a soft pretty clean background there and uh, you know AI is going to find that sky real easy but for photos where you have like say a tree line and you're putting an object at the boundary of the sky there may be a need to tweak that mask refinement so you get a cleaner uh, object placement there so it's a good thing to know about defocus is exactly what you think it is it will defocus the object and that way, if you have, if this were like a softer sky and you wanted to have this softer background, or sorry, softer object that was in the background, you have the control for that. And last, we can flip things horizontally. Um, well, just basically, yeah, side to side, horizontally. 
So that is the controls that we have in Augmented Sky. Um, I want to take you through a couple of uh, things to be aware of when you're using Augmented AI Sky you know, uh, options here, because these are the things that the details you need to pay attention to, because the AI helps you get a clean mask, a clean object that looks pretty good on your photo. But the photographer still needs to pay attention to the details. You want to make your photo look uh, reasonable or believable, there's some additional things to pay attention to. Maybe the first, uh, I want, this isn't really a quirk, but this is a, a thing to pay attention to. We were just talking about flip object, right? Okay, I just flipped that object. Well, this is a slightly less believable blend. And the reason I say that is looking at the lighting on the nose of the plane. You can see that there's a light source on the nose of this plane, slightly more on this side of the plane. Well, in this photo, my light source is the sun, and the sun is on the opposite side. Even though know, the sun, technically, it's coming from the, the, the bottom here, so this should be more lit up on the bottom. Well, I would need to choose a different object for that, but at the very least, I can flip it so that this side is getting more of my light source. So flipping the object, considering where the light source is in your photo, that's an important detail to pay attention to. Uh, let me zoom out here. Um, the second thing to be aware of with the tool, placing the object, as I move this object closer and closer to the horizon, you'll notice it's starting to fade out and eventually it just starts to disappear. This is Sky AI. This is not a full-blown compositing tool. You can composite within the sky. So whatever Luminar AI detects as your sky, that's where you can place images. Anything else, it's going to start disappearing. And actually now as I get into this space here, you know, maybe we'll start to see some some little bits of differences with with mask refinement, ooh, ever so slightly. Um, but you know, this is um, this is kind of where you have your object overlaying with your boundary, and you can see that there is a blend here. And this is is kind of awkward, honestly. I see parts of the the, the, the clouds and the, the the planes kind of becoming translucent. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? I wouldn't want to have that type of object there. Uh, speaking of objects, maybe um, thing three to be aware of. I see many photographers reach for the built-in objects, right? Um, I see this a lot with fireworks. You know, here's the firework. Well, this is becoming a very recognizable firework pattern in people's composites. Why? It's built into the tool, right? So it's there. Uh, and so, not that this makes any sense at all for this photo, but my, my point being, if you're adding this firework to your photo, chances are many other photographers are as well. You want to be able to differentiate a little bit. Uh, a little other quirk here too, check this out. As I move this firework, watch my sunshine here. Watch the sunshine. I move this over, look how dingy that got, right? So that overlay that's happening there, that's, um, that's a bit of a problem, right? I'm, I'm affecting this wonderful, nice glow out there where I place my object. Which brings me to another thing we can do with Sky uh, AI or the, um, the Augmented Sky AI is we have masking. So in this case, I'll open up my masking area. I have an erase. I can go erase from here. Now I'm gonna press and hold here because what the heck just happened? Well, when I mask in Luminar AI, it will show me this red overlay to show me where I'm masking. When it does that, and I'm probably like lit up by red right now because the screen's all red. When it does that, I can't see my object. So you kind of have to know where you were. Now if I let go, my fireworks come back and move my cursor out of the way. And I, I now have that color recovered there. So pay attention to what is behind your, uh, your, your object that you're dropping in because you may be affecting the color and the tonality of it, especially at the, uh, the, the, the big highlights here. Um, okay, so I wanna reset this tool here because the last, not really a quirk, but thing to do is make a reasonable replacement I mean, it doesn't make any sense for me to put fireworks in here. And uh, I mean, I suppose I could put like, you know, a ship out on the, on the horizon and have fireworks flying off it and so forth. That's not the mood that I want for this photo at all. Um, you know, uh, I, I would not want, you know, a, a, a giraffe 
in the middle of this. It doesn't make any sense. I see the space shuttle show up in scenes. Like, okay, I, I guess it makes sense for certain things. Not every photo needs a space shuttle. Uh, my style, my stuff is like birds. You know, I like birds. Um, what's birds two? Uh, a little busy. Maybe birds three. Here we go. Now we're getting into the realm of this makes sense for me, right? This 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 makes sense to me for this photo. So let me place this object. Uh, maybe I'll put the birds here. Okay, that's pretty nice. Uh, I don't have to worry about relighting or warmth or so forth. These are silhouetted, so uh, it, it's fine that they're completely dark. I do want to zoom in, and I will make them slightly defocused, just a touch. Why? This is a long exposure, right? See all this like water action going on down here? The shutter was open for you know, maybe half a second, you know, at least at least longer than than it would be to get these birds crisp. Okay? So I want a little bit of defocus on them, just so that there's that sense of motion. Uh, also, uh, zooming back out, I think it's a little busy. I'm gonna turn to those masking tools again and remove a few birds from my overlay. So we'll have that uh, bit of corking going on here where as I mask, and let's get uh, shrinking that down. I'm using shift bracket to change the feather. Let me remove, and remove these three. So from say here, and I, it was kind of up into this area here. I'm having to do a little guesswork. I'll let go, wait a second, come back. All right, I missed, I missed one wing right there. Okay, good. And then maybe this outlier here. I wouldn't want that bird. Okay, that's pretty cool. I like that. Last quirk. If you've done masking like this, the mask is really for like the whole canvas of the photo. It's not associated with the overlay object itself. Where does that become a problem? If you decide you want to reposition your object. So let's say, I like that, I'm all done with my masking, but you know what, I think I want the birds uh, uh, on a different spot. I wanna move them over uh, just a little bit farther. So I'm gonna move them over to here. And all my other birds just showed up. Why? Because of the mask. If I show that mask, the mask is still using the old positioning. The mask is for the entire, the entire canvas. It does not follow my object. So, I'll try to undo a few of my moves here. There we go. So I can put my birds back in line with my mask. So if you're gonna do masking to remove portions of something you have overlaid with augmented sky AI, make sure you're happy with where it's positioned. Otherwise you're gonna to have to repeat the masking work. And uh, usually it's not that big of a deal because you're removing a handful of you know birds here or there or smaller parts of the, the overlay. But it is something to be aware of. You know, so um, all that said and done, let's just take a quick peek of this like before the augmentation and then after. You know, it adds a little more to the story in this photo. And uh, so I, I, I do find that augmented sky AI has its place. It's useful for adding objects to the sky to add a little more visual interest. It makes it very easy to do. Right? The, the, the masking, the heavy lifting of masking is taken away for you. But do pay attention to the details, light sources, what direction things are flowing and moving, the same kind of things we do with sky replacements. You can drop a sky in easy, doesn't mean it's going to make sense for your photo. And of course, unless you're just doing compositing on your own. You like to do, you know, compositing, you're throwing together you know, these, these you know, wild disjoint things because that's creating a piece of art for, uh, for yourself. Awesome, it's great, go ahead and do it. But uh, my, my style and landscapes, I want things to be within the realm of believability, and I do have the controls to do that in Luminar AI. Hope you found the video useful. You got questions, go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.